Okay, I'm trying this again. <laughs> I tried it at one o'clock, but it didn't work too well. Uh, okay, so right now we have, um, let's see. Oh, okay, great. Uh, so it just looks so bright. So let me just bring that color down. My gosh, it looks like I'm out in the sun. Uh, but I have, um, this is right now we're doing Ask Andrea. So I had a whole bunch of questions that came in. Uh, to the website, right? So I have four pages of questions that I'm going to get through right now. And um, and for those of you that have questions, because this is a live feed, for those of you that have questions, you can put them into the chat box or into the, the live feed, and I'll get to them after I get to all of these questions. So as you can see, every page is loaded with, with questions that came in through my website. And in order to get those questions, um, you would go to andreabeeman.com, meaning to, to answer you know, to put in a question, you go to andreabeeman.com and on the, on the right side of the page is, um, is a little box that says Ask Andrew. You put your question in right there. Okay, so uh, let's see. Okay, so the first question that came in was from Suzanne. And Suzanne says, what are your thoughts on a vegan diet? Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks. I'm getting all these little messages. I don't know where they're coming from, <laughs> but thanks for putting them in. Uh, so Suzanne says, what are your thoughts on a vegan diet? Uh, I think that a vegan diet has a time and a place for everything, right? So a vegan diet can be really useful for somebody that is hot and inflamed. Maybe they have heart disease. They're presenting with an overheated condition. So vegan diets are wonderful because they're all fruits and vegetables, right? Fruits and vegetables and cooling. But I would not recommend a vegan diet for somebody that's in a state of deficiency and they're cold and they're weak or they have osteopenia or osteoporosis, right? So it, I think that vegan diets are wonderful, but they're not for everybody, right? And they're also great for cleansing, right? Because they really help you to clear out your system. You get all the grains and beans in your body and you're going to, you're going to the bathroom, that's for sure. Um, so uh, that's, that's for Suzanne. So the next question that came in is from Deborah, and Deborah said, when is your latest book on herbs going to be available? I didn't pick one up at the Take Back Your Health conference in Virginia when they were available, thinking I'd get one on my way out. Well, you know what happened to that idea. <laughs> All right, so Deborah, I don't actually have a book on herbs. I do have a thyroid book that does cover the herbs for thyroid, and it's called Happy Healthy Thyroid. Um, and... Uh, uh, but eventually, I mean, I guess in about a year or two, because I have another book that has to come out first, but in about a year or two, I'll do a book on herbs for you guys. But this one is specifically for thyroid, thyroid disease, and that's Happy Healthy Thyroid. Um, okay, so Lauren's question came in, and she said, Hello, I just read your article entitled Mammogram. Heck no, here's why. And I would like your opinion. I'm 36, and I detected through self-examination a lump the size of a pea. I don't feel that I need a mammogram since the lump is already obvious and easy to feel. I want to skip the mammogram, but should I get an ultrasound or some other test done or skip all of that too and just request, request a biopsy to find out if it's cancerous? And Lauren, thanks for coming to me with your question, but I can't offer you any medical advice. So if you feel that you want to go for a biopsy or you want to get a second opinion, then absolutely go. Um, I. Well, uh, the article that I wrote about mammograms is that I don't think that women should be getting mammograms, and there's a lot of information about that, um, especially in the UK and Europe. You know the the studies that they've done on mammograms and showing that mammograms can actually promote the onset of cancer or take a cell and you know like because you're you're squashing this soft tissue in this machine and then putting radiation here. That's just in every way, shape, or form, it doesn't make any sense. So, um, yeah, that's that's what that article was about. But it's, if you want to go for a second opinion or you want to go for a biopsy, you certainly do. Or go for an ultrasound, certainly do. Listen to your gut instincts. Listen to yourself and your body. Um, okay. Uh, Liz says, you recommend bacon and ham as flavorings. What about the nitrates and the nitrates in the processed foods? I thought they were harmful. Thank you for your comments. Um, yeah, I don't recommend nitrates, you know, and, and some of those added, uh, you know, additional preservatives that they use for some of those smoked meats. I do recommend for people, 
um, that are in a state of deficiency to have, especially if they're vitamin D deficient, uh, you know, pork fat from animals that are raised outside and getting access to sunshine, they actually have um, higher levels of vitamin D, right? So pork fat, which has been demonized since I don't know how long, um, uh, pork fat is very rich in vitamin D and we're like crazy. We're going crazy for like fish oil and this, that, and the other thing and vitamin D3 and all that. Um, but I would suggest putting a little bit of pork fat back in, especially if you're deficient. Um, and it's funny because, you know, the first question that came in was about veganism and now this question about pork and bacon. And it's funny because I've, I've known a lot of vegans and vegetarians and the one thing that turns them back to meat eating is bacon. <laughs> They go crazy for the bacon, so there's something in it that really calls to them. And I think it's probably the high levels of vitamin D um, because they can get deficient, right, if, if they're not getting uh, enough in their food. So, um, and also I don't recommend it all the time, you know, like uh, I used it in a, in a recipe that had collard greens, and this is a, a traditional pairing, is like ham and collard greens, traditional pairing, especially in the South. Um, so the, the fat from the collard, the fat from the ham will help you absorb the calcium in the collard greens much better. Uh, okay, so Lisa sent in a question and she said, hi Andrea, I just finished, and for those of you that are just hopping on, hi Rosie, oh yeah, I got your message about blood sugar, I'm going to get to it Rosie. <laughs> um, uh, for those of you that are just hopping on, I'm answering the questions that came in through my website, andreabeeman.com, under the Ask Andrea area. So, uh, Rosie, your question is in here, so I'm going to get to that. But first, Lisa had a question. She said, I just finished reading Happy Healthy Thyroid. I'm not willing to take thyrox, and I don't, I don't feel ill, but I have slightly elevated TSH. Nonsense, I know, but what do you recommend first, a parasite cleanse or a liver cleanse before starting to nourish the thyroid back to health? Uh, I want to clarify that I recommend parasite cleanses for people that have autoimmune thyroid conditions and for autoimmune conditions in general, because over 70% of your immune system lives in your gut, right? So if the gut is compromised, generally an overgrowth of bacteria, maybe some parasites, then it's gonna exacerbate that autoimmune condition. So that's when I recommend parasite cleanses. Liver cleanses, I recommend every year for everyone, regardless of whether or not you have thyroid disease, because you live in a toxic environment, you know, like, and you can eat the cleanest diet in the world, you can have the best exercise routine, you know, all this stuff. But we are, you know, exposed to toxins in the air and in the food and the water, no matter how clean it is. So I do recommend a liver cleanse once per year, once per year, usually in the springtime. So like coming up March, uh, I would highly recommend a liver cleanse for the majority of the world if they're in spring. Chris. <laughs> um, uh, Kristen says she has SIBO and she's not absorbing fats well. Uh, oh, we'll get to that. I'll get to that. I'm going to the questions that came into the, my, my website first, and then I'll get to, to your question. But, um, well, actually, if you're not absorbing fats well, you want to make sure you're having radishes in your diet. Daikon, red radishes, horseradish, right? That helps you to absorb fats better. Um, you also may want to try some bitters. But I'll get to those questions. Um... I guess I just answered that question. <laughs> so, and also remember to relax when you eat. And you may want to do like a gallbladder reset, you know, like having beets in the morning uh, for about two weeks, just like grated beets with a little bit of lemon juice, just to reset that gallbladder a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, so Eileen sent in a question. She said, if I choose not to eat meat, can I make bone broth with something else? Uh, I had a bone density test and it shows osteopenia. I want to build up my bones so it doesn't turn into osteoporosis. They told me to take 2000 D3. Any suggestions? I appreciate and value your opinion. Okay, so like I recommended, remember I, when I first opened up this uh, Ask Andrea, the, the first question that came in was, what do you think about vegan diets? So for somebody that has osteopenia or osteoporosis, I actually do recommend meat and bone stocks as well as fats. Um, and, uh, and I've, you know, but if you don't, if you can't, if there's a moral issue and you don't want to have any bone stocks and you don't want to have any fats, then I would highly recommend mushroom broth. Mushroom broth with a little bit of kombu or kelp, 
Um, but you want to use mushrooms that are sun-dried, mushrooms that have had access to the sun, uh, because then they're going to be absorbing more of the D that you need. And have them every day and see if it helps. And if it doesn't help, if you do a strong mushroom decoction, right, strong mushroom broth, and you can find that on my website. Um, and if it doesn't help to heal your osteopenia in one year, then I would suggest listen to your body and start to have some bones. Get those bones and boil them up and put them into your, you know, put that liquid into your diet. That's what I would highly recommend. Um, okay, so Lowry said, I keep hitting my left elbow almost daily. It's constantly sore. What organ could it, ref re could it reflect? This is a great question, and I cover this in my New Healers Master Coaching Program, but I'm gonna cover it for you right now because it's very important. Okay, so your left elbow, right? So we have small intestine meridian. It actually starts at the pinky, right? And it travels up the outside of the arm and it right on the outside of the elbow, right? And up into the shoulder blade and comes up through the neck and into the jaw and then back to the ear. Now, follow me here, okay? Heart meridian, because this is a complementary organ system, you have small intestine and heart meridian are complementary. Heart meridian starts here, travels down the inside of the elbow, inside of the arm, and it ends on the inside uh, of the pinky, right? So this is the heart and the small intestine. So when somebody is having a heart attack, one of the indicators in Western medicine is that they get, they get pain down the arm or in the arm, or numbness in the arm, or numbness in the jaw, right? So you're hitting your elbow. I don't know if you're hitting it on the inside or on the outside, but you're hitting your elbow. So this is a huge indicator that a couple of things. First is small intestine, you may not be absorbing the nutrition that you need and you may not be feeding the heart correctly. Um, or there's some stagnation in that meridian and you have to get it moving. You have to get it moving. So you hitting it constantly is intuitive. It's like human beings are very smart. We are very, very smart. We've just been cut off from our intuition. So you're hitting this constantly. It's telling you, let's get that heart and small intestine moving because something is stuck in here. Something's not working well. Um, so yeah, you said it's constantly sore and you're always hitting it. You, this is, this is brilliance coming from inside your body. Uh, okay. So Mary had a question. She said, what do, you, what do you do for thyroid when you have an allergy to sea veggies? Um, and one of the reasons why you may have an allergy to sea veggies is because they're very high in iodine. So actually, don't focus on the thyroid with, with that. You want to focus on the gut, right? If you're not able to, if you have an allergy, any allergy is indicating that the digestive system is not working well. So you want to focus on healing the gut. Slippery elm, marshmallow root mucilaginous foods, sweet potatoes, um, okra, right? <laughs> okra. <laughs> How many people like okra? <laughs> Just a couple, right? <laughs> Just a couple people like okra. But that, that slimy mucilaginous uh, food will help to support and heal the gut. And also allergies come from a congested liver. So people that get spring allergies, Right? They think, oh, I'm congested. Why do I clear out my nose? It really has nothing to do with your nose. Your nose is just the exit point for all of the mucus that's being um, uh, developed inside the body, right? <laughs> to help with the inflammation uh, because your uh, liver is congested. Uh, so what, remember I said earlier, for those of you that were on earlier, I said I really highly recommend a liver cleanse every spring. And one of, it, one of the reasons is just to clear that area, to clear your system so that you can digest food better. Um, the next question came in from Monica, and I should be crossing these off. Let me see, do I have a pen? Hold on, I got a pen. Uh, next question came in from Monica, and Monica says, is uh, atherosclerosis caused by Hashimoto's? What do you think of the thyroid connection to heart disease and cancer? And actually, I think that that is a great question because when the thyroid or the parathyroid actually is out of balance, your calcium levels are going to be out of balance, right? Because the parathyroid is regulating your uh, calcium levels. So one of the great contributors to both heart disease and cancer is high levels of blood calcium. So we think, oh, you got to have calcium, you got to have calcium, you got to have calcium. Yeah, this was a big era. 
This is a big error from the 70s until now. Look up the information about what happens when the calcium levels are too high. Um, so there's a possibility with Hashimoto's, because this gal is Hashimoto's, that she also is not absorbing properly. So that's something to, to look out for as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get to you guys' questions. i got to get to these questions first that came in. Uh, and I will. Uh, yes, Denise, I'll get to you and Brenda and everybody that's putting in stuff. Let's see what time is it. 122? Okay, i got to rush. <laughs> um, Merv, Merv came in with the next question. How do you keep your body alkaline consistently to prevent cancer? The problem is everything I eat during the day constantly changes my pH. Okay, newsflash. Everything that you eat is going to change your pH. As soon as you eat food, hydrochloric acid, right, is going to be stimulated. You're going to have an acid reaction because you've got to break down that food. It has to be made into mulch, right, so you can digest it. So trying to keep your body always alkaline is actually not the healthiest thing to do. You want to have balance. You want to have acid-alkaline balance. So um, Merv, try not to focus on that. Just relax when you eat. Chew your food. Make sure you're getting it. Uh, totally masticated and mixed with your saliva and your enzymes so you can absorb it and digest it properly. Exercise is important to also balance your pH, right? It's not just what you're eating. So if you're just going to eat something and then stick a, you know, one of those acid uh, alkaline pH things into your tongue, right? You're going to be driving yourself insane. <laughs> uh, Anna says, what to do to stop GERD? Is there anything natural to take? Actually, like I was just talking about with Merv, right? Anytime you eat something, you're creating acid and your, your enzymes and all this stuff is, is turning this into mulch, right? So for GERD, chew your food, make sure you're processing and digesting here instead of here because if you bite and swallow, guess what? You're going to produce more acid. More acid. You're going to have more flames coming up from the inside of your body and more of this acid burning your food. Right, so you gotta make sure you're chewing, you're relaxed. Um, and these these simple little things people aren't doing, which you know, they, they just take that little pill, the purple pill, the Nexium or whatever the heck it is, but it could be some simple adjustments. Sit to eat, relax, take a couple breaths. It's really not that hard to reduce that acid reflux, you know? So um, okay. Anna says, what causes women to have hair loss on the top of their head and how to stop it from happening? This area here, this is connected to bladder, right? So you first want to make sure you don't have any um, uh, overgrowth of bacteria in the bladder. Maybe take some black walnut hull, some golden seal. Just knock out any bacteria. Follow protocol, you know, go to an herb store or uh, Whole Foods or something. Um, but also stress will take your hair out, especially right here. And the more you stress about it, the more your hair will fall out. Um, uh, Barb says, what do you think about the medication called Armor? Uh, I think it's made from pig's gland. Yeah, great. Uh, I think that people need to be on uh, thyroid medication when they no longer have a thyroid or they've had RAI. So if you no longer have a thyroid or you have RAI, t certainly take that pig's gland. Um, Jesse wants to know how to lose weight as a vegetarian. I have 20 pounds to go. I don't eat dairy or sugar. Yeah, I gotta get through these questions first and then I'll scroll back and I'll go through you guys' questions. But I gotta get to the questions that came in through my website. Uh, that's andreabeeman.com. Okay, uh, Anna says, what's your opinion about the olive oil cure, Moritz's cure for extracting stones of the liver and the gallbladder consists of taking a big amount of olive oil and rest while your body eliminates the toxicity. Do you recommend it? If no, what do you think is the best thing to clean the liver? Thank you for your answer. Um, I think that if you have a strong body, that uh, olive oil, lemon juice, cleanse, you know, you could do that, but it's really hard. It's really hard on the body, and some people throw up, and some people are just nauseous the whole day, and um, some people just diarrhea the whole next day. So I think it's a very strong cleanse, and it can be useful, but there are other ways to cleanse the, the liver gently, right? Gently, a little bit of lemon water in the morning, some dandelion greens. Dandelion green salad would be awesome, especially in the springtime. Um, but if you if you feel like you need to have a really strong, 
flush, then that's that's a good one because it's going to open up the the bile ducts. Because you you know you put that amount of oil, you put two thirds of a cup of oil into your body, your bile ducts are opening right up. Boom! It's going to push bile into your system because you got to process it, right? Your body is really smart. Um, okay, let's keep moving. And I see stuff is coming in. Uh, okay, uh, Annette says, hi, Andrew, I'm a big fan. I'm a little late asking my question. I saw your webinar on physiognomy. Physiognomy is visual diagnosis. Fascinating. I have a brown patch about two inches wide that I recently noticed on my right where my hip bone is. Not sure what that's indicative of. Also, I live in Manhattan Beach, California, and I'd like to find a practitioner like you to go to. Do you know of anyone that you can recommend? Okay, so two, two things. The first is the brown patch that popped up on your hip. This is connected to your gallbladder, right? Your gallbladder and your liver. Um, so, because this is the gallbladder meridian, travels down the both sides of the body, on the outside of the body, into the top of the head, right? It goes up and down the body. Um, and brown patches are related to liver, and the liver and the gallbladder work together simultaneously in, har you know, in harmony, right? So it's a complementary organ system, like heart and small intestine, like I said before. So the first is there could be too much sugar in your diet. Your body may not be able to handle the amount of sugar. The liver may not be able to store that amount of uh, sugar. Uh, or it's, it's, you know, like it's storing and then it's releasing really quick. Um, so you, we've got to look at liver gallbladder for you. As far as finding a practitioner like me, uh, I've been training people for about you know, four years or longer, send me an email, info at andreabeeman.com, and I'll check in with my group, my New Healers Master Coaching Group, and I'll see if anybody lives in that area and can work with you, right? Work with you on herbs and diet and lifestyle and all that stuff. So send me an email to info at andreabeeman.com, and I'll have one of my students, if they live in that area, contact you. Uh, Sanjita says restoring gut microbes to heal the inflamed gut lining so that body can absorb the vital nutrients okay so restoring the gut microbes you got to make sure that that gut it has the right consistency for the the microbes to stick in right so you need this is where mucilaginous foods come in really handy yogurt kefir um right because they're gooey they can you know they have that stickiness right everybody thinks oh dairy is bad there's a place for dairy and if you want the gut microbes to stick inside your body Put them, let them come in on with uh, um, yogurt, with kefir, with something like that. Um, you could also use slippery elm, marshmallow root, um, you know, uh, seaweed, one of my favorite mucilaginous foods for helping the restore that gut, right? Um, and then, you know, it takes time. You got to relax when you eat in order to get all that stuff. Okay, so Rosa, Rosalbina, Rosal. Rosa from Costa Rica, she says, Hi, Andrew, my problem is high blood sugar, especially in the morning. As you know, I'm living in Costa Rica, and I have all kinds of herbs in my garden. I would like to know which one would help me. Thank you, and a big hug from CR. Okay, so Rosa, and I don't know if it's Rosalbina or Rosa Lina. I think it may be spelled wrong. I'm not sure. Um, for high blood sugar, especially in the morning, you want to... Wake up in the morning and you actually want to utilize that sugar, meaning you want to exercise. So not rigorous exercise, but stretching. Open up your body, stretch, uh, take a little walk before you have your breakfast. But the blood sugar, you know, your blood sugar gets high when the cells can't use the sugar, right? Because your body is saying, I can't use this sugar. I'm not opening up the cells. I'm not going to open up the cells and let the sugar in. And it's causing the blood sugar to rise in the in the body. So you want to actually utilize the sugar that's in your cells so that your pancreas says, okay, let's go. Let's get that, let's get some insulin over there because insulin is the key that unlocks the cell and lets the sugar in to reduce that blood sugar. So you actually have to exercise. Um, you could certainly use herbs. You know, fenugreek, I don't know if it grows in Costa Rica, but that's a blood sugar lowering herb. Um, as well as maitake mushrooms. Mushrooms are... They're one of my favorite blood sugaring fungi. Um, blood sugar. Blood, did I say blood sugaring? <laughs> oh my God, I'm crazy. <laughs> okay. Uh, Peg. Peg says, what herbs would best help with lymphedema issues? I have abdom abdominal and thigh issues. 
due to 48 lymph nodes being re removed from ovarian cancer surgery. I also had eight lymph nodes from axillary area with a bilateral mastectomy. So I also have upper arm lymphedema. Any suggestions? Yeah, you had a lot of stuff going on. So for the lymph, of course, you know, exercise is imperative for the lymph, right? Because the lymph needs movement in order to move. So now you have all this lymphedema because they took out the lymph nodes. I think um, I would put burdock root in your food um, for sure because it, it really helps support the lymph. Uh, but also you got to move. You've got to move your body. Get that body moving. Uh, that helps with the lymphedema. But, you know, also you have to make sure that the heart is strong because that, you know, the heart and the, the lymph, you know, the circulatory system and the lymph, they're working together and in harmony. So, uh, I mean, maybe some hawthorn berry or something like that. But I would suggest um, definitely exercising and, and get with a practitioner because you've already had a lot of surgeries and a lot of stuff. So you don't want anything to... Um, interfere with anything else that you're taking okay it's 133 i have this much and this much more to go and then i'm gonna get to your questions live i just gotta get to these first oh rosie sending you a big hug oh yeah so it's not rosalinda it's rosie right so this is this is a typo um yeah we get you moving in the morning sugar you get up you get out around the banana trees and the coconuts and you just walk around in the morning and get your body going um okay so carolyn Carolyn says, oh, and for those of you that um, if I don't get to you and you want to get your question answered on the next Ask Andrea, you go to andreabeeman.com, and on the right-hand side, there's the Ask Andrea box. You put your question in. Uh, Carolyn says, I'm a fit 50-year-old suffering from hot flashes. At night, they are debilitating, and sleep eludes me. I would dearly appreciate some advice. I'm enthralled with your knowledge and understanding of emotional and physical health. <laughs> All right, Carolyn. Okay, so hot flashes. This is... Um, this is directly related to liver heat, right? So the liver is releasing at night when you're sleeping. Uh, you're getting these hot flashes, right? So we have to look at your hormones. And one of the things that I love the most for hot flashes for women are all the dark leafy greens, right? Because they're helping the liver. They're helping cool the body. Um, specifically an herb for hot flashes, motherwort classic and it is bitter bitter it's more bitter than kale it's more bitter than parsley it's the bitterest herb you're ever gonna find but it will help with those hot flashes you and also sage start putting sage you know the culinary herb sage um into all of your food right you can even make sage tea if you have sage in your um in your cupboard take like a one tablespoon of dried sage put eight ounces of boiling water steep it uh, drink it during the day. Drink three cups of that during the day. Uh, but sage also helps cool down hot flashes. And again, that has another really bitter, bitter uh, flavor. So the motherwort um, is extremely bitter. And if you want to take it, uh, try and get it in a tincture form, right, for those hot flashes. But that should help clear that up. Nobody should be suffering in the middle of the night, sweating their brains out. You should be sleeping comfortably in dreamland. Right? Dreaming of your next wonderful meal <laughs> of whatever it is. <laughs> uh, dreaming of brighter days. Uh, okay. Uh, Brenda says, which herbs can support the organ systems and heal the body? Brenda, that is just way too broad of a question. It's a great question, and there's about a million of them. Right, so here we are on the earth, and the earth has plants and herbs and fruits and animals and everything at our disposal. So here on the earth, we're in symbiotic relationship with the things that are on the planet. So there are many herbs that can heal the organ systems. We just, we haven't been using them, <laughs> right? I think it, it happened in the 1500s or the 1600s where they just started killing all the witches, you know, and, and they were using plant medicine, right? Plant medicine to help people. Um, so thankfully it's making a comeback and the witches aren't being killed. Like I consider, I'm probably a witch, right? You see all the crazy hair. I put firecrackers in my hair to make it look like this. Uh, hi Ashley. Okay. So Janet, Janet says I have, and I'm almost ready to take your live questions because I got just a couple more to go. Janet says I have Gilbert's disease, which means my liver has elevated bilirubin, 
What herbs do you recommend to take to help with this condition? Actually, not just herbs, but your foods, right? So you, you need to be able to clear the liver with, uh, when you have elevated bilirubin. So high fiber foods, uh, fruits and vegetables, fantastic for this, whole grains, right? Um, oats, wonderful for something like this to help clear. Uh, remember I talked about dandelion before, that's a fantastic herb. Put it in salads, that will help to clear some of that, um, uh, that liver stress that's going on because when you have elevated bilirubin, you're not clearing. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're getting the right food and you're also um, clearing that liver. So exercise, probably running uh, would be great for clearing. Um, you know, I would also go and get massage as well. You know, you could get a, a do, abdominal massage, uh, you know, uh, Mayan abdominal massage, Shiatsu, they do abdominal massage, but all of that will also help to clear, right? Because we want to clear the area. <laughs> you want to clear the area. <laughs> uh, Deborah says, I have psoriasis and I'm living in Texas this time of year. Cedar is bad. I've been tested by my acupuncturist being sensitive to cedar. What is it that when cedar aggravates my sinuses and I feel like crap for a couple of days, that even if I'm eating correctly, my psoriasis will break out on my forehead? I assume it is the toxins pouring out. Um, your forehead is connected to your digestive system, right? So, so is this here. But this is connected to small intestine and up here is, you know, bladder and stuff like that. So um, you're, you're having a reaction and your body's not clearing, so it's coming up through the skin. So anytime that we can't clear through the detoxification organs, you're going to clear through the skin. You're going to get psoriasis, you're going to get eczema, you're going to get boils, you're going to get stuff that pops up. So you want to make sure that your detoxification and your elimination organs are working well, especially when that cedar pops up and you're having an allergy to it. Um, I would do a liver cleanse once per year for this, for sure. And you could go onto my website and put into the search box, liver cleanse, and you'll get all the liver cleanses. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, Nan says, my daughter is nine years old and the blood work shows TSH third generation value 5.34, T4.9. How can I put her in the normal numbers? Thank you. Well, first thing you gotta do is get her off any um, crap foods and get her onto real whole foods um, because um, the thyroid will normalize. Also, if she's under any stress, it'll throw out the thyroid, right? If poor little kid is having stress in school or something like that, this is a very sensitive gland. Um, so if she's not able to express herself, also that will affect this gland. Um, so there's a lot that you can do. And I would highly suggest you pick up Happy Healthy Thyroid. It'll show you how to get your, um, and the author is Andrea Beeman. <laughs> It'll help you, show you the foods, the right foods to eat and all that stuff to help you get your, uh, your numbers balanced. You can also go on my website and in the little search bar, it's a little my, uh, magnifying glass. Put in um, the word thyroid and everything that, uh, related to thyroid will pop up. Carol says, I get thin black vertical lines on my fingernails. Do you evaluate fingernails? Yeah, okay, so when you're getting black lines, and I've seen this in, in lots of folks, when you're getting black vertical lines, uh, generally there is some toxicity that's happening with the liver that it can't process. So, um, and I know everybody's like, oh, liver this, everybody's got liver problems. Yeah, we're living in like liver time right now, right? We're living in liver congestion and kidney depletion. Like this is the main stuff that I see, especially in the big cities. So the black lines, you know, like you can tell the health of the liver as well as the thyroid by looking at the nails. So um, when the nails are thin and brittle, then thyroid's not, you're not absorbing proteins properly, thyroid's not balanced but also the liver presents itself through the nails, right? So also through the eyes, because the liver meridian comes up through the body and goes through the eyes. So um, if you're getting black lines, you have to look at liver toxicity. Um, and also if you get black dots on your nails, then you have to look at actually um, blood in the stool, because uh, it could be hemorrhoids or something like that going on. Um, okay, D says I have uh, varicose veins behind my left knee and the skin around the area and I got a rash. It's rough and itchy. What can this be? Are there ways to heal varicose veins? Mine are thick and bulging out. Yeah, actually astringent food and herbs will help. Like your veins that have popped out already, you may not be able to heal those. They may, you know, they may, they may you may be able to take the pressure off of them, but they, they're already pretty, um, 
uh, expanded, right? So you can take the pressure off of them with astringent foods. Uh, lemon is astringent, as well as um, horse chestnut. But look, I would get with a practitioner. Witch hazel, witch hazel externally and internally can help to really tighten and tone those veins so that they're not bulging and hurting you, right? And you can also get food grade witch hazel and take that internally. Um, and then Nicole says, how do you feel about a liver and a gallbladder cleanse or a flush? And I feel that they are great. Once a year, I do a, a liver cleanse myself every year. Um, and and I, I wouldn't live, I don't know if I could live healthfully on the planet without it because we're just, like I said earlier, so toxic. Um, so there was one other question that I missed and it was from this gal. She says, my TSH is over 16,000. What can I do to get this down? Well, first, I think that may be a typo, but with an extremely high, high TSH, it shows a low thyroid. Um, so I would also recommend my book for you as well. So let me get to some of these questions that came in earlier that you guys put into the feed. Okay. Um, oh, that's not going down. Swipe left. No. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm going to have to get it on my... I'm gonna have to get it on my thing, uh, on my, uh, I'll pull up my laptop because I don't know how to get to the questions. I saw them all coming in. Oh, look, I, I could just like one. Um, no, uh, this is stinky, right? I hate technology, modern technology. It's so crazy. So I'm gonna pull it up on my Facebook feed and see what those questions were because I saw a bunch of them come in so I'll answer them here. Uh, so let's see. Okay, so I hope you guys are getting some good info here. All right, so here it is. Oh, I can't even get the feed here. Uh, Audrey says, uh, oh, hi, Natalie. Uh, uh, Audrey... Wait, Natalie says, hello, Andrea, what are your thoughts on a fast while the liver needs nutrients to go through both of the detoxification phases? How will the liver do its job without nutrients? I know fasting has been practiced for thousands of years. Natalie, it's a great question. Um, fasting, what happens is when you fast, right, your body goes is already going through a detoxification process on its own. But what happens is you have these macrophages and all of these other um uh, cells in your body that will go and they'll eat up all of the stuff that's in your system, the debris, uh, the debris that's in the lymph, the uh, mutagenic cells, right? Cancer, that's a, that mutagenic cells, the ones that their P53 hasn't turned on, right? They haven't had death of the cell, right? So it'll go in, that's apoptosis, by the way, uh, death of his cancer cells, apoptosis, and that's what you want. So if you're not feeding the body, your body goes into cleaning mode on its own and it goes and it's 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 going into the corners and sweeping out all the stuff and breaking down all of the the stuff that you have inside your system and it's putting it now through the detoxification it's going to go it's going to break down it's going to go through the lymph it's going to go you know uh, or also through the intestinal system right and you're going to excrete through the feces so like um like, even if you fast for three days, by the end of the three days, you'll still have bowel movements. You will still, but first of all, because your intestines are over 30 feet long. But as your body's cleaning up all of that waste, it's putting it through the natural, natural detoxification organs and through the intestines to be excreted by the body. So that's why uh, fasting is amazing. It's amazing, and I really recommend it. I do it once a year, and if I don't feel good, if I get sick, I don't put food in my body, right? I take food out. I'll stop eating, right? And look at your animals. Look at like dogs and cats. When they get sick and we're like, oh, my cat, my dog isn't eating. We're like, here, little fluffy puffy. Here, eat this. And the cat's like, no. And the dog is like, get away from me. You know, go underneath the table, right? So even the animals know that when they're sick, they don't eat, right? So sometimes it's better to actually fast. Uh, so... Let's see, another question came in from Marina. Marina said, I had a hysterectomy with a removal of ovaries, also thyroid cancer and Graves' disease. I'm on armor at 120. Okay, but there was no question that came in with it, unless I missed it. So let me see this stuff. Oh, now I can see 
hopefully they'll stay. Hopefully these questions will stay because <laughs> before I lost all of them. Uh, okay, Kristen, that was the first question that came in. Uh, Kristen says, I hope you're well. I have SIBO and I'm not absorbing fats well, which means I have developed nutritional deficiencies. How can I help my body to absorb more fats? Okay, first of all, you want to get the SIBO under control. So like for SIBO, I recommend something like black walnut hull or cat's claw. Well, especially cat's claw because cat's claw is one of the only herbs that gets through the biofilm in the intestines and can knock out the excess bacteria. Right, because SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. You have an overgrowth of bacteria. So once you knock that out, you want to actually heal your intestines, right? So we talked a lot about mucilaginous herbs, and also I didn't talk about eating out of season. What is it? One forty-seven. We have thirteen minutes. I'll talk as fast as I can. Uh, eating out of season can actually damage the ileocecal valve and keep the bacteria proliferating out of control, right? As well as candida. So you want to make sure that you're eating seasonally as much as you can, reduce the sugars, um, knock out that bacteria, put in good bacteria using either kefir, yogurt, uh, sauerkraut, kimchi, uh, you know, all of those um, uh, bacteria rich foods, right? And eat locally and seasonally and that should start to heal that. Uh, okay, so Louisa says, I have Graves' disease and took the radioactive iodine to, to destroy my thyroid years ago. Is there any recommendation you can give me since I practically don't have a thyroid? Yeah, go on to my, um, go on to my website, www.andreabeeman.com, and in the little search bar, put Graves. There's a lot you can do to help you feel better. I know that you took the REI, RAI, but you still need to nourish your adrenals, right? Because just destroying the thyroid doesn't actually make the body feel better it just takes away the symptom which is the overactive thyroid so um, you actually still need to support your adrenals and your kidneys as well as the rest of your endocrine system so um, definitely get on my website or pick up my my book happy healthy thyroid even though you, you may not have the thyroid anymore you can still have the rest of your endocrine system be happy and healthy um, okay Erin says I'm breastfeeding my nine month old and I have a 3.5 year old and I'm getting sick every time. Oh, and my three year old does. Oh, my immune system should be stronger. I'm not sleeping well due to feeding the baby. Tips on improving immune system to avoid getting colds every month. Yeah, okay, so what happens is the baby, not only when, when the baby was in utero, it was taking all of your deep nutrition and now you're breastfeeding so you're not, you're getting really depleted. So this is where I highly recommend bone stocks and fats, right? Good quality fats. If you're not having butter in your diet from grass-fed animals, put some butter in. Um, definitely bone stocks, beef stocks, meat stocks, chicken stocks, turkey stock, duck stock, fish stock. Um, but put stock into your diet and have really nourishing soups with those stocks to help rebuild your energy. So earlier, somebody had asked me a question about veganism. And like after pregnancy and during pregnancy is not the time, right? That's the time for much more animal foods. And of course, still eat your vegetables, but start to rebuild your system. You want to you wanna use the energy of the animal, um, which is a strong, vital, vibrant energy, and you want to actually build up the system again. Uh, it's hard to do that on sprouts, right? Um, so if your immune system is crashing, you, you're, it, you need to build, right? You need to build for sure. Okay, uh, Denise says, do you have any tips for healing people with mold exposure? Yeah, mold exposure, and again, one of my favorites for like mold and stuff like that is black walnut hull, but you also have to support the lungs. So you've, you've got to first get away from the mold. You have to boost your immune system, support the lungs. So there's a, a great Chinese herb. Uh, there's only a couple places that carry it. It's called Prince Seng. S-E-N-G. Support your lungs and your immune system by building up your lungs. You want to reduce your toxicity and your exposure to mold. So you got it because they're in the spores, they're in the airs, they're everywhere. So you have to make sure that you are um, not in that environment um, and you have to build your immunity. But also I would suggest like some good quality mushrooms because that's, um, they have their own set of spores, <laughs> right? That are actually very nourishing to both the lungs and the large intestine. So like shiitake, mayatake, um, all of those mushrooms. Reishi, you can't eat it, but you can decoct it. Reishi is wonderful as well. 
Jesse says, how can I lose weight as a vegetarian? I have 20 pounds or more to go and I don't eat dairy, sugar, or wheat. Um, yeah, what I would do is if you're vegetarian and you want to lose weight, I, I would, you said you're not having dairy, sugar, or wheat. As a vegetarian, are you having eggs? I would actually increase your eggs and your non-starchy vegetables, onions, greens, carrots, cabbages, right? I would increase all of those. I would reduce the starches a little bit just to help you balance out and increase the proteins, right? So if you're a vegetarian that eats eggs, then you put more eggs in, right? So that you could balance out the amount of carbohydrates. So vegetarians have a tendency to eat a lot of beans and grains. And for some people that is great and for some people it doesn't work well. So I've found that um, when you just reduce the starchy uh, veg and grain a little bit and increase the protein, right? So if you're not even doing eggs and increase your beans a little bit as well as your non-starchy veg and that should help. Um, okay, let me get over here. No, nope, cancel that. Uh oh, I can't get here. Um, Lisa says, hi Andrea, I read your book. I started eating good quality meats and organic veg and my TSH has dropped from 4.54 to 3.4 in one month. <laughs> I tested negative for Hashimoto's, but should I still do the AIP just in case? No, you're doing great. Congratulations. You're doing great. Um, just keep doing what you're doing, right? Don't overdo it. Don't have so much uh, uh, good, you know, like you, you could eat good quality meat, but you could overdo it as well. So just make sure you're having a nice balance of your meats to your uh, fats, to your, to the, to the vegetables, to the starches, right? And don't, ne no, don't neglect the starches, right? So a lot of people, they go on, they start healing their thyroid. I hear from people all the time. They're like, oh, I'm not eating any potatoes and I'm not eating any grains. I'm not eating any beans. They just eat protein and greens and, and it can actually cause the thyroid to crash. Uh, because they're not getting the glucose that they need, enough of the glucose. And they're also not producing enough of the insulin, right? So that's, it's all connected. So you're doing great. Just keep doing exactly what you're doing, right? Um, okay. Uh, oh, Jesse says, what is facial diagnosis called? Oh, physiognomy. Physiognomy. Um, oh, Rosie, big hug right back to you, little cutie pie. Um, and we are at 154, so I got six minutes. Uh, thanks, Elsino, for sharing my video. Uh, Jesse says, what are your thoughts on a raw food diet, especially a high fruit diet? I think that there's a place for it, Jesse. You know, like, um, like I said earlier, when we first started this, somebody asked me about a vegan diet. And if somebody has an extremely hot condition, they're overheated, they're inflamed, they have heart disease, uh, they have, you know, inflammation all over their body, right? I think fruit being a fruitarian is pretty smart because fruits are extremely cooling, right? Um, I wouldn't do the, I know there was a guy that was doing like 25 bananas a day. I, had, I, I, I wouldn't go that far, but some people like 25 bananas a day. Uh, not for me. Um, but, uh, you know, it all depends on their condition. But I think that we are designed, physically designed, as um, uh, not as vegetarians, and not as carnivores, we're in the middle, right? We are omnivores, we're, we're designed, we have stomach acid, we have hydrochloric acid, we have enzymes, we have carbohydrate digestive enzyme, we have protein digestive, so we have all of the things that we need. So it, the, the, the physical design of our body speaks to being more omnivorous. Um, so I think use meats when you need them, use vegetables when you need them, use fruits when you need them, but start to listen to the body and let the body guide you, right? Am I, am I overheated? Am I too cold, right? If somebody's too cold, I'm not putting them on a fruitarian diet, right? I'm not, not putting them on fruits and vegetables. I'm gonna tell them to have stocks and meats and you know, go out and get yourself a nice cheeseburger from a grass-fed animal, right? Build, build the blood, put some rosemary in your food, right? So you have to look at food, well, what's going on because you're walking, talking, breathing, living food, right? So what's going on in your system? Are you too cold? Are you too hot? Are your detoxification organs not functioning well, right? Uh, what's happening? Start to look at the body and say, well, how can I manipulate this system so that it functions well? Because it's a system and it's an amazing system. Um, okay. Audrey says, any advice for managing pain from endometriosis? Yeah. 
actually you have to get your hormones in balance, right? So uh, with endometriosis, generally there's also high estrogen. Um, so you want to you wanna make sure you're clearing, clearing the hormones. And again, that's looking at liver. You want to make sure you're getting that liver flushed and supported uh, the best that you can. And for the pain, hot water bottle is amazing, right? A hot water bottle, when you have the pain, it's such a simple little remedy, but put it on there and, and just rest, go rest. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to go and save the world, right? Just go rest. Um, yes, okay. Oh yeah, I, I did that one already. Oh, we're close, we're at 157. Uh, Marina said, I had a hysterectomy with the removal of the ovaries, also thyroid cancer, full, and Graves' disease. I am on arm. Oh, they have, yeah. There's no question. They have to put in the question in two minutes. Um, Hillary says, still have muscle pain. Okay, so if you have muscle pain, go get a massage. Um, also, why is the pain there? Are you tight? Are you too tense? Are you too stressed? Take an Epsom salt bath. Put some lavender essential oil in there, right? Somewhere, if you're having muscle pain, you have to open up and relax, right? So um, if you're having muscle cramping, then your uh, magnesium is, is out of balance. Your calcium and magnesium is out of balance. Uh, so that's, you know, nuts and seeds, fantastic for the calcium, magnesium, right? You could also take an Epsom salt bath, right, to get the magnesium that you need, but that will all help to relax your system. Um, uh, Louisa says, I have Graves' disease, took the... Oh, I already answered that. Okay. Uh, and I answered that one. Uh, Marina says, oh, we only have two minutes left. I'm trying to get to as much as I can. <laughs> My, uh, Marita says, my doctor wants to change me to Synthroid so I can lose weight. I have brain fog and I'm tired. I don't know what to do. I'm a hot mess. My levels are all over the place. Ah, Marina, definitely pick up my book. Um, you know, and also you say you're a hot mess. So that tells me that it's liver heat rising. So, you, you, you know, like motherwort, one of my favorites. Um, you know, if you have all of your, and again, it's really, really bitter. So you got to be careful. But also all of the bitter greens, right, can help with that stuff. Um, to cool down your system if you're a hot mess, right? If you're getting hot flashes or anything like that. But the brain fog is also, you want to clear that. So to clear brain fog, you know, ginkgo biloba, um, calamus, right? That really helps to clear brain fog and brain fog. <laughs> I'll get flogged. <laughs> um, um, but that you'd have to get at a specialty store. It's called calamus, C-A-L-A-M-U-S. It's very aromatic and perfumey, but it really helps to clear brain fog. The brain fog could be coming from two places. It could be coming from the gut or it could be coming from the liver, right? So you're thinking, well, how does that have to do with the brain? If it's coming from liver heat rising, it's affecting the heart and the mind. If it's coming from the gut, it's like a stagnation, right? A heavy, dense stagnation. So to clear that, Calamus would help with the brain. Rosemary would help with the gut, right? Put rosemary in your food. It also helps with the brain. And if you go to Learn It Live, I have all of these cooking classes and it teaches you how to clear the gut, how to clear, you know, get the circulation going up to the brain. You know, there's, there's lots of stuff. Go out to my website. Yeah, and there's also lots of blogs and all that. Uh, Natalie says, sorry if I keep asking, but these concepts sound counterintuitive. I'm trying to logically understand how it works. Oh yeah. Liver cleanse, one of the best liver cleanses, best in the whole world, is fasting. Now, how is that the best? Okay, when you fast, your body has these scavenger molecules, these scavenger cells that go in and clear up everything that's in your system, right? Whether it's debris that's in the lymphatic system, stuff that's in the digestive system just sitting there, um, at clearing the blood of debris, right? It goes in and it scavenges. That's what happens. So when this is going on, this is helping your body detox so that it's freeing up, right? It's, it's freeing up the energy of the liver because the liver is constantly detoxing, right? So it's just pushing stuff through. Let's go get the detoxification systems moving. Let's go get the lymph system moving. Let's go. So this is one of the ways that you can actually help the liver is to not eat. Now, what's going to happen is... And it's, it's 2 o'clock, so i got to end this. What's going to happen is 
initially you're going to get so tight and angry as, as your body almost goes into like a squeezing, right? It's going to start to squeeze and push those cells out, right? Um, but by the third day of a fast, um, your liver is going to be like, woohoo, life is good. <laughs> I'm happy, I'm healthy, right? And then start eating again, uh, small little meals. Um, but there's, there's information on my website on a fast. There's also lots of books on it. But it'll help. Okay, so this was my uh, Ask Andrea. This was my Ask Andrea. Any other questions that you have, you can go to info. Uh, you can send in an email to info at andreabeeman.com or you could put in your question, right? Because those people that ask their questions on my website, they get answered first. They get top priority. <laughs> Sorry, guys. They get top priority. Um, so you go to my website, andreabeeman.com, and on the right-hand side, you go to um, Ask Andrea, put in your question. And for those of you that want to understand a deeper understanding of healing the body, you can always hop on and join my New Healers Master Coaching Program. So you go to my website and you go to Programs, and right there, New Healers Master Coaching Program, it's a four-month program. It, we cover all of the phases of the, the liver and the organs and the kidneys and the adrenals and the heart and the circulatory system. We cover the whole body as well as the herbs and the foods and how you can see illness uh, before it manifests into a real disease and, um, and how you can stop its progression. It's, it's not about medical diagnosis, it's about using ancient forms of diagnosis to assess what's happening in the body, where the pain is, right, for that poor gal who had the elbow pain, oh my gosh, um, right? So you can assess what's happening and then make shifts in that person's diet and lifestyle so they can start healing. So that's uh, the New Healers Master Coaching Program. And uh, thank you guys for coming out today. I loved answering your questions. I love this stuff. Um, and, uh, and any other questions, you go to my website. And I'll see you next time. Okay, have a great weekend.